Hello, and welcome again to Survive to Thrive, a transformational program interviewing really cool people who are sharing with us the ways into which they are not only surviving, but thriving at this time. Today, I welcome Diana Scott. And Diana Scott is a former broadcaster uh, turned politician, turned entrepreneur, and digital nomad. She is an aspiring author currently writing about living in 12 cities in 12 months as part of her year of yes. Her year of travel turned into two and then three until this coronavirus hit and she has come home to Calgary, Canada. Her mission is to inspire others to overcome their fears, just say yes and find their joy, whatever that looks like. Welcome, Diana. Hi, thank you. Hey, so glad to have you here. Oh, a pleasure. A pleasure. Can you see me? I can't see you yet. Oh, I am. Um, I can definitely see you. You look okay, gorgeous. Okay, so there you are. Good. Awesome. Hey, nice to see you. So um, I know Diana from, I know I've mentioned this before, but I am part of self-publishing school and we're in a unique smaller group, um, which is called Author Accelerator. And Diana and I met there, and that group is really a group of real change agents in the world that are not only developing a best-selling book, um, which Diana is preparing, um, and, but also a really phenomenal area for entrepreneurs and various thought leaders um, to get together and be their best selves and support each other. So that's what this is all about. So thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's a great group of people. Yeah, really phenomenal. So Diana, tell me something. How are you doing? What is happening with you right now? We're in March 31st um, of 2020 and you're back in Calgary. Uh, how are you doing with this current pretty massive crisis going on? Oh, I've been up and down. I'm really usually good at sort of rolling with the punches uh, and adapting to whatever situation, but this one has been a little bit hard. I'm not going to lie. I've gone through a whole bunch of stuff, you know, a couple of days on the couch, just like, ah, frustrated. Um, but yeah, I've adapted um, some, some um, coping mechanisms, I guess. And uh, right now I'm feeling pretty good, but I'm not going to lie. I went through some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's pretty intense. I think that people are generally intuitive people, which I know that you are. Um, it's not only managing our own inner peace, but understanding the crest of suffering that is possibly approaching, you know? So I think that we're, it's the unknown state. And so I hear you, you know, and I think it's great that you took those two days of, uh, you know, a couple of days of restoration on the couch because we need that. Restoration's massively huge. So congratulations for you on that. Oh, so, hey. Yeah. So, you know, I'd love for you to offer some tips because obviously Survive to Thrive program is really about not only creating a community of people that are, you know, in the survival mode, but also ready to thrive. And that's why I'm bringing actionable uh, items to the audience. So please share with us some things and some challenges and some tips that would help people in the listeners. Oh, Zoom has froze. Hmm. Please hold. Okay, good. You froze just a sec. So carry on. Uh, thanks. Yeah. So dealing with the challenges. First, I'll just tell you real quick, sort of um, your listeners about my situation. So I've been a digital nomad for about three years, uh, coming home in the summers to visit my mom, who's here in Calgary. So I was in the summer, uh, here in the summer, a little longer than I expected, four months instead of two, went traveling, um, expected to stay away the whole year, came back a little bit earlier because my mom wasn't well. So um, that was kind of scary. So I've been here since Christmas. So for a girl who moves around every month to two months, staying here, I mean, I've been here a long time. So I'm feeling that, um, I don't know, wanderlust, I guess. It's not even just about the travel. It's about um, having a new environment because I find that I really thrive in a new environment. And when something gets stale, I have a little bit of trouble with it. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one of, one of my issues here. Uh, and I can hear some people with their little violins. Oh, Diana, you know, <laughs> um, be grateful. And that is, I guess, the first strategy that I used because, yeah, I can't do what I want. Uh, I can't see my friends. I can't have the lifestyle that I plan to have. 
but you know what? I'm not stuck here, which is what I was thinking when I was, oh, I'm stuck here, but I'm not stuck here. I'm actually safe here. And if you think about it that way, that makes me feel a whole lot better because uh, the whole world is in chaos and nowhere is really safe. And I'm lucky to be here. I have a house, I work remotely, so I still have a job. So I have a lot to be thankful for. So um, I'll also say I was feeling a little bit guilty about feeling sad and frustrated because sure. I do have it so good, right? And I'm like, well, I really can't complain, but I want to complain. So right, and I it's okay. I You're right. I, yeah, and that's what I keep saying to people. It's like, yeah, absolutely. And at least it's authentic because, you know, like, the, the, listen, the bottom line is I can't tell you how many people that I talk to. I'm good. I'm great. And I'm like, really? Like, how can you be really good and great? I mean, yeah, there are elements of your life that may be good, but we're in a massive crisis and people are suffering. And we're, none of us are immune to that unless we have our head in the sand. And I, I, you know, I appreciate you sharing your actually, your authenticity in regards to that suffering, you know, that it is a challenge, especially if you are a wanderlust and you're on a journey. And part of that is the making of a book and birthing something like that. And also thinking about this time is, you know, like you think about the swamp and, you know, say if you're in Florida and you're driving by any swamp. And you're like, wow, that looks like barren. But oftentimes what's underneath that is the most verdant, alive um, experience, uh, biological, chemical uh, <laughs> regeneration. So in what ways, I just like that metaphor, in what ways are we creating right now that metamorphic creation, both of our human spirit, our physical body, um, and our emotional state. I just think it's super crucial for us to, to think about that and sort of in that context. Yeah, that's a great metaphor. Mm. So yeah, I would say feel your feelings and then let it go, right? Feel your feelings and like wallow on the couch for a day or two or whatever you need to do, and then go out for a run. That's not me because I don't run, but, you know, go for a run or read a book or call a friend or, you know, get re-motivated, listen to a TED talk, get back to work mm -hmm. and, you know, forget about it. But, but own your feelings and don't feel bad because you have it better than somebody else. Yeah, that's super valuable. So awesome. So I love that. Feel the feelings and name them. Right, because oftentimes what happens is people don't actually know what they're feeling. They just feel a basic over sense of unrest, particularly men, um, because I've had a few interviews with men, and I think it's really important that we address that. Women, we, in general, we know we're a little bit more tapped in just by nature, the way we were nurtured. Um, nature, nurture, who knows? But we do have the ability to call a friend and say, "Oh my God, blah blah blah, I'm pissed, or I'm this, or I'm that." Um, men don't have that same kind of resource. So I think the more that we can as leaders um, come from that feeling space, how are you feeling? How can I honor that feeling? Whoever you're speaking to, uh, I think that's really important place without judgment. If we can move through that, I think that that's huge. So thank you for sharing that. That's very true. Feel the feelings for sure. Yeah, I have a, little, a quick story. It's so yeah. semi relevant. Um, just about these random guys. I don't really know them very well. But back in the city where I was living in the mountains a few years ago, there was this group of older, older guys, I don't know, in their 70s or something, and they'd meet uh, every day for coffee in the morning. And they had this rule, which I thought was brilliant. Uh, everyone, I think there were about five of them, could talk or complain about whatever they wanted for 90 seconds. <laughs> And that was it. And they all took a turn. And if anyone went over 90 seconds, then they had to buy everybody the coffee. So they never went over 90 seconds. So it was a way I thought it was kind of brilliant because everybody gets their, you know, complaint of the day out, but it doesn't go on and on and on. And it doesn't turn into an hour of commiseration. Right. You talk about what's wrong. It was kind of brilliant. Yeah, I think I love that. It's awesome. Yeah, because we all need to be able to vent. And I think that that's the important thing for us is to be able to create a space. And it's the reason why we're doing this programming. So I love that. So awesome. So we also talk about, like you said, that whole idea behind stuck here instead of you're, we're safe in these places. And we talked a little bit about gratitude. Um, what um, we also talked about something that I love that you wrote this. People say routine, routine, routine. Um, so you don't necessarily agree with that. So I'd love to um, hear your comments and, and how you would approach that and what you would recommend to our viewers. 
I think balance is key. I'm kind of, uh, I'm an Aquarius, um, creative, and I do a lot of different things. I've never really had a routine. Like when I wasn't at a job, I didn't really have a routine. I just filled my day. I have A, B, C, D to do. I go and do it whenever uh, I feel like it. And I'll fit in social stuff in between and or walk yeah. the dog or whatever I need to do. So I never really had a routine or felt that I needed one. Um, for this endeavor about writing my book, I totally need a routine and I do need an exercise routine. So I'm listening to you because you have amazing tips. But I noticed, yeah, there's this focus on, you know, you're not at the office anymore. So when you're home, you know, have a routine, get up, get dressed, have your coffee, have your breakfast, uh, work for, you know, an hour, then have a phone call and then work and then have lunch. And um, if that works for you, that's fantastic. But I just want to say if it, if it doesn't work for you, you're not at the office, so it's okay, I think. Um, you know, you're, as long as you get your work done and you do what you need to do, I don't really know that it needs to be necessarily so structured. Uh, if, you're, if you're fumbling and that works for you, that's great, but as someone who doesn't do routine very well, I don't really know that you need to worry about that so much. As long as you get what you need to get done, done, and be responsible about it. I think the way you structure your day is, is totally up to you. Right. I, I love that because I think that there's a lot of creatives out there that may be listening. And so much of what people have been talking about in these um, interviews is daily habits and give it st structure and make bed. And you know what, that may be really cool for some people, but honestly, it's not for everybody. Um, what I would recommend though, if you're feeling untethered, to maybe either at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, track what you want to get done, even if it's just one thing. You know, again, um, that book, uh, The One Thing, is like, you know, what are you going to do today that's going to be uh, make everything not only unnecessary but easier? So I think that's a great strategy. And then also really a, a way of, uh, of celebrating your successes. At the end of the day, track what you did. You know, just track those little things. And... Um, and again, we, we're talking about the office structure. Um, there's a study um, out in an article that was just in the Wall Street talking about, you know, at home, five hours of quality work is the same as in an office. That's the translation. So there's distractions at work, there's meetings and such. But if you're getting five quality hours of work, you're nailing it. And um, just understand that that's really important. It doesn't mean you have to be, you know, work like a slave. You do want to have, as you said, Diana, balance. Yeah, no, and as a digital nomad, uh, working with a whole bunch of other people who are also digital nomads, we totally find that um, people are super focused when they're doing what they're doing, and they're not distracted, and there aren't people walking by the water cooler, you're not getting a million phone calls. Um, there are all these things that aren't distractions, and you just get so much more done uh, quickly, which is why I think that uh, lifestyle is so attractive to, to many people, because you can really focus and feel good about what you're doing and accomplish a lot, but then have uh, extra time for yourself. Right. Unstructured time that can be wonderful. I mean, maybe it's reading a poem. Maybe it's, you know, it can be whatever feels good for you. And I think that this is a time for us to organically tap into what feels good. What yeah. feels good to you viewers. Um, that's Especially what really we're doing. Yeah, we're not used to that. We're, you know, we're so used to running away from our homes, not running to them. So tapping into that feel space, I think is really, really important. And I, I love it. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, really taking that time to think about how does this feel for me? What do I feel like today? And I'm living with someone now that's actually a friend, a daughter's a friend of, sorry, my friend's daughter, so they got out of New York, and so she's with me, and so basically it's like, hey, Megan, how are you feeling today? Like, what's your, you know, so just being respectful of not only what you're feeling, but also the people around you, because it, it changes day to day, moment to moment right now. It really does. Yeah, and take advantage of, you know, you have a little bit of time, like my, my whole thing is finding joy, right? It's yeah. easy to get complacent. And um, my normal examples of finding joy would probably be outside the house, but we're all inside and there are still ways to find that. Um, you know, maybe there's something that you've really wanted to do for a long time uh, that you haven't done or you felt I'm not good enough or whatever, but 
maybe in these two hours you're bored out of your tree, well, pull out the pencil and paper and start drawing like you've always wanted to. Or do something that makes you joyful and, and try and add those elements into your day. And I think that will, you know, sort of help make this isolation thing a lot better as well. Yeah. And a lot of things too, I love that. Uh, a lot of things too, um, oftentimes what's in the way of us really knowing what we want is we're tolerating things in our life that maybe um, it's time to let go of. Um, in my book, Claim Your Inner Badass, I actually have a whole chapter on tolerations with a list of over a hundred things that many of us tolerate. It could be in your physical space. It could be in your relationships. It could be your emotional experience. But really being able to create more space for yourself is making a list of what you're tolerating in your life and then one by one releasing those tolerations so you can make room for more goodness. Love it. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, on the routine thing, I totally agree with you. Um, actually, that's what I'm trying to implement when you were talking about um, maybe having a couple times of your day that are structured, like the morning and the night. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am trying to do that at night. Um, because I still don't really like a routine. I don't know when I'm going to get up, get up when I get up. But if I know the night before that I want to do these five things the next day, to me, it doesn't matter when I do them, but I know I have those five things to get done. So that's kind of how I'm tackling my routine part. I love that. And also I think that it goes back to to accept your process because not everyone is super rigid and disciplined. I am like the so classic ADHD person. I mean, I will stay up to 11 one night. I'll go to bed at eight. I mean, I think Megan thinks I'm nuts. She's like, now what are you working on? You know, it's like eight, nine at night and I'm finishing something or I'm doing something. So our, I see how different our structure is and I'm honoring my process because maybe today, yesterday, whatever, I went for a walk and a bike ride. And now I still have to edit. I'm relaunching my book, Living Sexy Fit. But I still got to get those edits in. I'm going to have to do it if it's eight or nine at night. Oh, well, I'm not going to judge myself. So I, I think that if you feeling a lot of pressure on being really difficult and hard on yourself, breathe and release. Self-sabotage is uh, it's a killer. So yeah. you deserve much better treatment. And just remember, you certainly would most likely not be talking to your friends, your best friend or your children in the way into which you are speaking to yourself. Yes. And I love what you just said, because if you feel like you have to work and you really want to go for a bike ride and you have energy to release, but you insist on sitting in front of your computer trying to work, you're not being productive. That's time wasted. Go out for your bike ride, release your energy, feel better, then come back. You're going to be able to do what maybe would have taken you two hours in one hour. You'll be much, um, much more focused and you'll feel so much better. So right. just go, I think, with how you feel. Yeah, go for the reset. Go for the reset and be kind to yourself through that process. It's so important, you know, really, truly is. So um, anything else, because we're just winding down, Diana, I will post your link so that people can find you and also follow your journey with your book writing, which you're, when are you looking to launch that book? Put hopefully, me on the spot. Hopefully in a couple of months because okay, good. Uh, April's going to be the month of the, the right. So. Okay, good. So we're going to say, I'm going to be part of your book launch and we're looking mm -hmm. for end of May. End of May. Okay. All right. Sounds Sweet. good. So I'll be sharing that information with um, the viewers on this link. So you'll be able to follow Diana and her journey, her nomadic journey. Any um, parting words, Diana? No, just um, try and uh, see, you know, it's hokey, but it's true. Try and see the silver lining in, you know, when you're safe at home, you know, uh, do you get to spend more time with your family? Are, right? Is everything chaos and you're like absolutely crazy? Yeah, but you know what? You can't get that time back. Right. So try and think of the little things that are um, that you can be grateful for in, in this time before we get back to our new normal. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to talking to you again. And again, um, I will post your information in the show notes. So all you viewers, thank you for being a part of this interview. And remember, this is a wonderful time, not only to survive, but thrive. My heart is with you. My blessings are with you. And please take good care. Take care. Thank you.